In this video, we will look at how nuclear power plant works, specifically the one that has pressurized water reactor. Let's look at its major parts first before its mechanism. This is the reactor vessel, where the reactor core is located. The core is a collection of fuel bundles, and a fuel bundle is a collection of rods with cylindrical pellets inside. These pellets are made of a fissile chemical element like uranium dioxide. In a pressurized water reactor with 1,000 megawatts electric, there are about 51,000 fuel rods with over 18 million pellets. Uranium dioxide is one of the fuels which can be used to produce heat in order for the nuclear power plant to generate electricity. The heat can be produced by nuclear fission or nuclear fusion, but most pressurized water reactors apply nuclear fission. For those who don't know, nuclear fission is the process of splitting an atom. Particularly in our example, the uranium atom is bombarded with neutron in order to split it into two more uranium atoms. In doing so, three neutrons and energy are also released. These neutrons can also hit other uranium atoms, therefore continuing the splitting, hence the term fission chain reaction. On the other hand, nuclear fusion is the opposite as atomic nuclei are combined instead of splitting them. Nuclear fusion also releases neutrons and energy. But, if there's a fission chain reaction in a nuclear reactor, why does it not explode like atomic bombs? Well, the atomic bombs Little Boy and Fat Man have uranium and plutonium that are compact and dense, so when a fission occurs, it results in uncontrolled fission chain reaction. In a nuclear reactor, as you can see here, the uranium is split into different rods, so it's not compact. Aside from that, the vessel also has these control rods which usually have a percentage of boron or cadmium which absorb neutrons to prevent them from reaching the uranium atoms, therefore controlling the intensity of the fission chain reaction. In addition, this reactor vessel has high purity water inside which serves as coolant to prevent thermal explosion. The other parts of the plant are the pressurizer, steam generator, steam turbine, generator, condenser, cooling tower, and substation and power lines. Now, this is how a nuclear power plant works. It all starts here in the reactor core. When the nuclear power plant is still new and has never operated before, the core is started by using a start-up neutron source like the combination of polonium and beryllium. These metallic elements are inserted into the core. When the control rods are lifted and these metallic elements mix together, they release a burst of neutrons, therefore starting the nuclear fission of the uranium. Nuclear fission releases so much energy, therefore heating the reactor core. If there's too much reaction, the control rods are dipped down to decrease the reaction, and if there's a need to increase the reaction, the control rods are lifted. This very hot core is then cooled by the high purity water inside the reactor vessel, therefore heating the water as well. This water can heat up to 325 degrees Celsius, so it must be kept under 150 times the atmospheric pressure in order to avoid boiling it. That's the job of the pressurizer, to prevent the water inside the reactor vessel from boiling. The very hot water inside the reactor vessel is then pumped out to the steam generator through this tube. Then, through this inlet, the hot water goes through these two bundles. Then, it goes back to the reactor core. As you can see, the water inside the steam generator does not really mix with the water from the reactor core. 
the water from the reactor vessel is cooled indirectly from the two bundles. In the meantime, as the water inside the steam generator continuously cools the incoming water from the reactor vessel, it reaches a boiling temperature, therefore producing steam. This steam then flows through these primary and secondary moisture separator tubes, which separate tiny water droplets from the steam. Then, the steam goes through the steam outlet, going to the steam turbine. In the steam turbine, the steam first reaches the high-pressure turbine. Because of the pressure from the steam, this high-pressure turbine rotates. After that, the steam then flows through the next set of pipes, going to the low-pressure turbines. This rotation of the turbines also rotates the rotor of the generator. This rotation of the rotor generates an alternating electric voltage, which is induced in the stator, therefore creating the electricity. The electricity then goes to the substation and the transmission lines. Then, the steam from the steam turbines flows to the condenser. This is where the steam is cooled down using these tubes with cold water inside. Once steam is cooled down, they turn back into water and get collected at the bottom. After this, the water is pumped out of the condenser to be used by the steam generator again to do its job. Meanwhile, while the condenser is cooling the steam, the cold water inside these tubes becomes hot. The hot water is then pumped out to the cooling tower through this pipe. In the cooling tower, the hot water then flows through these passages, then to these tubes where the hot water is sprinkled down to the water basin. These drift eliminators are installed in order to minimize water loss. The water in the basin, which is cold, is then pumped out through this pipe going back to the condenser to be used for the same process. And that is how a nuclear power plant works.